Uh, well, good morning and uh, thank you very much for joining us. I am Yori Folare. Uh, well, my guest this morning is uh, a security consultant, uh, Major General Retired um, Omahi, Obi Omahi. Uh, and I want to say good morning to you, sir, and good thank you for coming on. Good morning, Yori. Thank you for having me. It, it's our pleasure. And good morning, Nigerians. Indeed. Um, so, uh, General Omahi is... Um, He's, he's the former commander for Brigade, uh, headquartered in Benin. He's also, uh, he used to, he's also a GOC. He used to be GOC 81 Division of the Nigerian Army, headquartered in Lagos. And um, I suppose one of the reasons we invited him here is that he's also the, uh, he's the former chairman of the Southeast Security uh, Committee. And um, that's made up of the states in the southeast area. Now, I wanted to talk about security and find out from an expert in the matter, because um, the general, as I just said, former chair of the Southeast Security Committee, um, I want to ask him his assessment of the state of security in that area and what exactly uh, has been happening to the concept of Ebu Beagu uh, that was announced back in April 2021 by Southeast governors. What has happened? What's the development? What's the, what news can we have on Ebu Beagu? Thank you, Yori. Um, the truth is that what is happening now would have been avoided if the political leaders had done what they were expected to do. When you say what is happening now, are you referring to the security situation? Security situation the in the bad Southeast. Bad security situation. Yes, yes. Okay. The security situation in the Southeast, as it is presently, is most appalling. The situation where some unknown government are in charge, <laughs> they decide on when people should go out and where they should stay indoors. And uh, like I said, if the Southeast government had done what they were expected to do, we wouldn't have gotten to where we are today. But today, there are a series of killings in Anambra states, especially. Mm -hmm. Kidnapping in other states. Imo state is a no-go area. Just some days ago, they kidnapped a prelate in Abia state and released him after he paid a hundred million naira ransom. So it is killing businesses. It is killing freedom, uh, freedom of movement in the southeast. In fact, it is making it impossible for people to think clearly mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in the southeast. Mm -hmm. But, like I said, we will not have gotten here. Yeah. In 2019, Southeast Security Committee was formed. And I, I just attended the Security Committee uh, of the Southeast uh, Governors uh, with some stakeholders. I happened to have been invited as a stakeholder. And I made some observations during the meeting. And I was surprised that thereafter they just named me. <laughs> As uh, the chairman, <laughs> no <laughs> prior consultations. <laughs> okay. So, but because it's something to do with my area, I had to accept it. And I was prepared from the depth of my heart to do everything humanly possible to change the narrative of the South East security situation. But unfortunately, as time went on, all the memos I sent to the, uh, uh, the governor's forum, all my entreaties, I didn't get any good response, except from the chairman of the Southeast Security, I mean, the Southeast uh, Governor's Forum. Okay. okay. Who is the governor of Ebony State? I was going to say Ebony State is the only place where there is a presence, some, some sort of presence of Ebubiago. Uh, yes, he had, only. he had that urge to ensure that the security that 
the Southeast was known for returned. But he was, I believe he was not getting the cooperation of his colleagues. Because all the governors in the Southeast, a number of times I sent security uh, warning notices to them. Only him responded. All the other governors never responded. So it wasn't a problem to them or so what? I, I do not know whether it is based on the fact that they do not have the, 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 the security of their government or their, their states um, as a priority. But I think that is the first priority issue in the contract of the government and the people seek to secure them. But they didn't pay much attention to security, apart from the governor of Ebony State, who gave it his whole attention. But unfortunately, everything was frustrated. I wonder how that can be, because um, why I say that is that I, I, I know, I happen to know that um, you've just told us how you found yourself in the job of uh, chair of the uh, Southeast Security Committee, that you just went as a stakeholder, and thereafter you were surprised to find that you, you had been appointed, shall we say. Your, you, announced and inaugurated. Uh, announced <laughs> and inaugurated. Yes. But you served gratis. For about two years, yes. not a cobble, because uh, no way, shape, or form was there remuneration not, coming not, to you. Not a dime. Might that have made them not then appreciate uh, what they had? They had an expert, a it, former general. It, in, in, in fact, um, there were some, uh, so, so, some things that of necessity needed to be done. Coming up with a legal framework. Uh -huh for the South East security. All the attorney generals of the five states of the South East were there. And then some stakeholders, you know, notable people, they were in that uh, committee, I mean, a legal framework drafting committee, some legal uh, luminaries mm -hmm. also. And we went a whole hog and drafted that uh, framework passed it to the governors for them to pass to their various states of assembly for, uh, to, 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 uh, for the bills, uh, for the, them to come up with a bill and give it a legal uh, backing. But I guess it's only in Ebony State where that went through. They passed the bill and it was signed into law. And that is... Perhaps why it is only in a Bonyi state today that, that you have a Bubago. All other states, they do not have it. And that is why also a Bonyi state is the safest state in the southeast today. It, 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 it's mind-boggling, quite frankly. Uh, why, as you've just said, a Bonyi state is noticeably different in terms of security from the other sister states why people are not keying, why the governors are not being keying, the stakeholders, the authorities, uh, you know, uh, why they are not keying in to the fact that they have a security arrangement uh, in Ebony State that is definitely yielding results. How can we leave ourselves at the mercy of non-stake actors, as you said at the very beginning, telling us when to come out and not to come out? Uh, can, you, can you sort of make sense of that? In, in fact, um, you know, the former, uh, the present governor of... Um, Anambra State is trying to do something to get his state back to a level that people can have freedom to move. But the former governor that was this, I, I was speaking with someone about, I, I got concerned about security in Anambra State, and I was talking to someone from there mm -hmm. who was also involved in security of, uh, of the state. He told me that when Obiano was the governor in Anambra State, that he wasn't even releasing funds to sustain the vigilante that the state formed. And he, in fact, confidently told me that some of these un unknown gunmen were actually members of the Anambra State vigilante that veered into uh, the, these uh, criminalities because they were not being paid. They were not being serviced. 
So that's how terrible the, so, the situation is. Well, it, well I, I want to ask about uh, Ohani's Indigo Worldwide uh, that also get a co got a copy of your, shall I say, resignation uh, from uh, the Southeast Security Committee. You can't, you, they are a major you know, influence, I would imagine. Were they not able to come to bear on the situation, the unsatisfactory situation? Oh, in fairness to Hanese, right from the time of Chief Nyangwodo up to the time of Professor uh, George Obioso, they did everything humanly possible to persuade the governors. I tell you, the governor of Ebony State sponsored all the um, exercises as they affect drafting of uh, legal framework for Ibubago. He was the only governor that sponsored some activities of the, um, the security committee mm -hmm. and then the drafting of the legal framework. Okay. And the choice of this uniform you see they, they are wearing. Mm -hmm. Each state has okay. the choice. The, the, we saw some maneuvers. Yes, all, this, all the states, uh, uh, all, all the, uh, uh, the representatives of the various states, they were part and parcel of coming up with this uh, this uniform design. The difference, it's supposed to be the same color for all the states, but different, the neck. Okay. The neck, the yes. neck color. Yes. The color. Yes. That would be it's the different only distinguishing. Yes, each, each of the states. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, I tell you, there was a time, the OB of Furniture, the um, uh, Nyangwodo, um, Chief Emmanuel Uwanyangu, and then, um, uh, in fact, three of them, they went round to all the governors, persuading them. But, you know, like I told you, the governor of Ebony told them that he is 100% for the uh, improvement of security in the Southeast, and that if the other uh, governors can play along... Okay, so and, Yes, he will be very willing. So... In a word, I'm getting from you that the situation security situation in the Southeast is not just quite poor, but it needn't be so if there was the will among the executives, maybe removing Ebony State right now, but all the other states, for some reason that is yet to be fathomed, it wasn't seen as an urgency. You, you know, it's, um, it's very unfortunate to be, uh, you know, uh, 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 Southeast is a geopolitical zone. So whatsoever affects one side has a way of spilling over to the other states. So, and that is why it was important ab initio for all the governors to key into every necessary effort to ensure that security was given a priority attention. Because without security, nothing else works. Nothing else works. What, what, is the, what, what is the solution? And I know I can only be saying it so simplistically uh, because I'm not involved there, but I'm just thinking of the people who have to live in the region and have to live with the apprehension of um, any time something can happen, they can't, you can't plan your lives, you can't plan your business, you can't plan anything with the possible exception of Ebony State. Um, so what is is the solution. Is it for the governors there to wake up? But I, I hesitate to say that because I imagine that governors have to be woke. Yes, I guess um, the governors must redefine the importance of security. Okay. And place it appropriately in its position as priority one um, commitment, uh, they, they should have commitment towards... Which, which clearly you don't think is the case right now. It is not the case. Let, let me take a call from uh, one of our uh, viewers, uh, okay. Mr. George in Ikeja. Good morning to you, Mr. George. Good morning, Uncle Yori, and uh, good morning to the general before you. Yes, thank you. I don't know if the general, by his name, is related to the governor, Governor Mahi. But uh, what I really want to say, Uncle Yori, is this. I had said it several before, that the insecurity in the Southeast is self-inflicted and that the elites in the Southeast are the ones indirectly promoting it through IPOP. Uncle Yori, do you remember that? 
Yes, you have said that in the past. What this gentleman is saying this morning is a corroboration of what I had said before. I didn't know that things like this had been at the background. They don't, they, the elites do not seem to be interested in resolving the security issues because they set it up in order to profit from it. But as it is backfiring, they don't know how to go about it. That is the simple truth of the matter. I hope I, I, I get to be proved wrong <laughs> in future. Okay. But what this your guest is saying is proving me right. Okay. It, okay. Thank you very That's much. What I want. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. George, for uh, venturing uh, uh, that opinion. Um, what do you think of... Yes, what he said is, um, is right. Um, the truth that is not known to many is that there are some political elites that leverage on the insecurity situation in the Southeast for their own selfish needs. Some of them think that they can use IPOB to rig election. So somehow they give their support, tacit support, okay. secret, support secret support to, uh, to IPOB and ESN, hoping to reap from it in time of election, in time of politics. So when he said it's self-inflicted, I agree with him to that extent. To that extent. Mm. Yes, but the truth is that if the governors were, you know, as proactive as they ought to be, all these things should have been preempted. Okay. Um, Mazi Okorofo, good morning to you, sir. Good morning, sir. Good morning, General. Good morning. General, good morning. Yes, Mazi Okorofo. Honestly speaking, if, you, if we are seeing what, is, what, you have, what the General is talking now, is the true position on what is happening now, not a embargo. You know, during all Joseph Okalo, he had his own group of security. When Obatanjo collected all the security men out in Abia State. Now, all those boys that time, which all Jews had, many of them, they, are still, they have their own different security network. Thank God that everything has come to normal. But the South East governors does not trust themselves. That is why you see what is happening in South Look, the South East, they have their own security network, the governors themselves. Refusing to pay the vigilante, you know what it means. How much is how, how much is it? The highest work cannot go to fifteen thousand or twenty let's call it ten thousand, fifteen thousand. What does it take them from their security vote? But the question is this after organizing all these points to attack the opponents during the election, during before and after, at the end of the day, the whole thing bounced back to South East. Now you ask yourself, every month the people sit at home, not going anything. Now they can't say he has no, he has no, he has no uh, time. It's, it's, it's not part of that. Now, who are the people responsible? Are you telling me that the governors in this state that they don't know what is happening, and they have not kept the whole state ungovernable? At the end of the day, when you are, somebody says anything that is positive for the benefits of the masses. You see the governor now arranging these boys to go and attack them before he talks about So let me tell you, there was a woman that went to die, you know, in Ono, a doctor. What happened? Before he talked about Robinson, the woman was, in short, was assassinated. Just as it. I think they are, I don't know whether they are buried her or not. Just made telling me that she participated to say that that was one. Now, all these things are going on, going on, going on. Do you know the type of underground, what the governors are doing? They are creating more problems. But the question is this. At the end of the day, they will leave the office. They will not stay there permanently. But what I'm telling them is that what the foundation they have played, they will come back and bring their own children, children will inherit it. Because you cannot move now and say something. So, so, you are telling me to your afraid. You are going for church, you are afraid. You are inside your family, you are afraid. Is that how you are going to go? I look at so many people now. Look at the pensioners, they have not been paid. Tell me, what does it take the governor to pay the pensioners? I'm talking about other states, what I know now. So people put that two months, 18 months. 15 months, they have not been paid. What the, when the governors, I wish they would solve it, but I pray to God that anything you have done, anything you have done, you come back, it's what they call Lord of Nemesis. And tomorrow, he said, it will come back. May God bless all of them. May God bless all of us. Thank you very much. General, please tell Nigeria the truth that Elbago 
that they, now you ask yourself, you tell them, why is it that in a boy's state, every day, every month, you will hear an award card bastardly killing in a boy's state? Why is it so? Okay, Good thank one. you very much, Mazi. Let's get the general's comments. Okay, the, you know, um, across this nation, especially in the South, you usually have communal, inter, intra and intercommunal conflicts. Okay, so that is uh, something that is common in some parts of a Boeing state because they are always fighting over land. <laughs> you know, so that has always been there for quite some time. So it has added to the state of insecurity in the southeast. But as to, to tell you the truth, since the sitting governor of a Boeing state took over, most of those things have been reduced to the barest minimum, except the last one that happened at a firm area. Okay. You know, and they said there was it's a spillover from um, Benue State, that Benue State organized some uh, bandits that crossed over to attack and all those. Uh, but we know that there is what they call a fium and a fium eza, eza, that they have been having clashes. So that one has always been there in the history of the state. So, it, 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 it's, so this it's, is like can additional be on top. Yes, you can isolate that and know that it's a normal thing. Okay, but which the sitting governor has done everything possible to reduce to the barest minimum. But the issue of insecurity in the South is known, which was orchestrated by IPOB ESN, mm -hmm. which I was saying that the governors, some governors refused to address appropriately and it spilled over for, to for what political motives. Yes, uh, some of them for political motives. Is peeled over to what is it, it is today. Mm -hmm. So can, uh, when some elites want to settle scores, they begin to look for these bandits. Um, to use. Reverend Dominic, good morning to you, sir. Thank you for holding on. Good morning. Good morning to, your, good morning to your guests. General, yeah. Okay. Your, let, me, let me sound like a broken record. Your, what is hap happening in the southeast now is also what is happening in the north by bandits and Boko Haram. And we can stop it. What do you mean, we, what I mean we can? This crime is not petty crime. It's not hunger crime. It's not about because somebody is hungry. It is government-induced crime. How do I mean? You're in any system, after God Almighty, the pastor, after God Almighty, the next Almighty is the government. How on earth in South East, you're we are business people. We love money, as we will say. How can people sit down at home? Businessmen keep quiet. The pastors keep quiet. Traditionalists keep quiet. Government officials will go to that day and drink champagne in the set house and keep quiet. In a state, in a state governed by government, what kind of nation is this? Somebody called Banana Republic. It's insult to me. But how does Banana Republic work? We are a non-state actor. You know, last week, last week, or last two weeks, almost the whole week in South East was sit at home, Thursday, Wednesday, Friday, and the government there, the only one man that seems that is governing South East is a bank in Savannah, who is educated, who sees this as an eyesore. How could no state actor hold the state ransom, and we call it a nation, you know, from South East to North East to Nigeria, do we have a government? I support the APC. Most of us today are shame of ourselves. This is not how government is supposed to run. There's no way a non-state actor will be more stronger than government. Whether, whatever you call it, whether it's the East or the West, the non-state actors have taken over government. Look at my own personal constituency. Look at the bishop, the, the tenant all day. Do you know the shame? We paid 100 million with it for hours. You know, who spent millions in Bush? Do you know what is 100 million, sir? Who spent 100 million in Bush? The young men that are this man don't speak English. How do they spend this one million? You know, the, the crime in Nigeria is state induced, is government induced. If not, we can arrest it one day. Thank you. Thank you very much for calling in, Reverend. Yeah, let me just uh, point out some things. You see, the insecurity in the South is, I said, it was originally orchestrated by IPOB ESN. 
But when it was brief, as the chairman of South East Security uh, Committee, I was shouting on top of my voice that some of the clergymen were propagating IPUB in the churches. That is a fact. I said it. I said it. I said it in security stakeholders meeting. And I confronted at least somebody. And I said, what your people are doing will consume the Southeast not long from then. And I have also conversed that the Southeast elders should go into meeting at the various states, conclude their meeting and come out and condemn the insecurity in the southeast. But each elder, you can imagine someone who is 80 years, 90 years, is afraid. Oh, if I say it, that I probably will come and kill me in the night. Or no government will attack my house, or will burn my house. Look. So there's intimidation. It's in, they, they, yes, feel of course, intimidated. There's intimidation. And so why is it that all of us are not ready to die instead of live life of slavery? Okay, one moment, sir. Uh, Ada in Joss. Good morning to you, ma'am. Hello, yes. Uh, good, good morning, uh, Mr. Yuri. Good morning to Major General Odi Omahi. I keep looking at his face, and he looks like uh, the governor. I don't know if it's a coincidence. There were, anyway, that's by the way. Um, it's again in the southeast. It's really unfortunate. What the general has said there is exactly what has been happening. And that has been my view and some other people's view. Well, let me tell you something. The insecurity in the south is has been politicized by the governors in the southeast, with the exception of uh, Professor Shorude that has just uh, uh, stepped in as, as a governor. I mean, and this is very unfortunate. Unless they decide to uh, come together and have unity of purpose and face this insecurity in the southeast, we, we will not uh, have any, uh, I mean, uh, we, we cannot amount the, 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 the insecurity there uh, soonest. You see, the problem here is that they think that they, they are secured because they have a tenure of uh, um, security details, but they are making a big mistake. The way the thing is going, going it's no more, it's no more a mustard seed that's going into a, 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 a corner or a pit plate, you know, that it has got to a point that they can now even disarm their own security details the way it is going. So I, I remember uh, Bob Marley used to say that uh, when they reinforce, it doesn't follow in one man's house. That is it now. Now it's getting out of control. How can we have uh, on government, that is uh, uh, um, non state uh, actors taking over the whole place? People are not coming out because they are scared. What of the uh, uh, the, 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 the first person for uh, uh, the general or what world, worldwide? What did they do? Did they not attack his house? Nobody is saying that's the issue. You know, nobody, nobody is securing them. The federal government is not even securing us there. They're not securing the South East as in the first instance, you know. Look at the bushes, they are all there with all kinds of uh, people. Why can't we, we be pro proactive? The bishop they kidnapped and after 24 hours, he was very lucky. He belongs to a, a, a particular church that believes in working and praying. The others who believe in only praying and kept on praying for their own, uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, I mean uh, kidnapped uh, uh, reverend, and they killed, they killed them there. You know, so these people are wise. They brought him out. But the man, if you listen to him, you know, did you ever listen to him, what he said? What is happening in the bush there? Did the federal government not hear about it? What is what he told us what is happening in those bushes, what they saw, and the people that are doing it. Okay. What are we talking about in this Nigeria? Well, thank you, Ada. Thank you, Ada, for calling in. Uh, it's a very, very serious topic. And, uh, uh, General, uh, you, is it accurate to say that you resigned in frustration? Maybe I can refer to what she said, then I come to, yes, I resigned in frustration. Absolutely. You know, I'm, I'm going to come back and you're going to continue on that theme, yes. sir. Let me go on a quick break about resigning in frustration from trying to help the Southeast area as former chair of the Security Committee. Stay with us, please. We'll be right back. We'll also, uh, you know, as soon as the General has answered that particular question, we'll switch to the politics. And I'm happy that the General, as a retired military officer, can comment on anything uh, Nigeria. Uh, he'll, so we'll, be, we'll, we'll come back and the uh, General will still be with us. And we shall also be joined by uh, uh, Dr. Twinji Abayomi, constitutional uh, lawyer. Stay with us, please. We'll be right back.
Okay, welcome back, and uh, we still have with us our guest, our special guest this morning, uh, Major General Obi Omahi, retired. He's a security consultant. He's former chairman of the Southeast Security Committee. He's a former commander for brigade headquartered in Benin. He's also the general of. He was the general officer. Uh, commanding 81 Division headquartered in Lagos. General, when we went away, I said, look, generals don't resign. Soldiers don't resign. But you said that, look, this one, you resigned in frustration, which is strange to hear. A soldier never backs off. Yeah. yeah it's a, it, a, in mission command, there is what they call, you are given a task, what to do. You are also provided means to do it. Okay. How to do it is your business mm -hmm. as a general. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, but I know how to do my business. I knew what to do, but the means of doing it was not available. So that's frustration. And even and non state non-state actors seem to have the upper hand. Of course, of course. And then a, a general will not want to stand a situation that he knows he can deal with, but does not have what it takes to deal with it in terms of resources. Let me then ask you, General, what is the way out of the log jam? You have yes. submitted your resignation. Yes, thank you very much. I want to appreciate Soludo for what he's doing, but I want to advise him. Okay. The governor of Anambra State. Mm. There is no how one state can solve this problem of insecurity in the Southeast. I want to advise Governor Soludo. I know he's a very, a very brilliant guy. Let him make contact with the chairman of Southeast Security, the governor of Ebony State, who has made a mark in this security issue. Let the two of them, at least, they, they have like minds when it comes to this security issue. Let them deliberate on what to do and they still try to bring other governors of the Southeast together. It is not what one governor can do. The, no matter what he does mm -hmm. in what he's doing, he approach it now, he can solve the problem. Okay. He must have to make contact with other governors. It is something that, look, oppression in one state cannot solve it. These it people, must be across the region. Yes, it, and simultaneously. Any oppression against these miscreants, which I, I, I always put the blame of insecurity in the Southeast on the doorsteps of IPOB ESN. It is true that unknown government criminals have hijacked it, but they still have the blame. So to solve this issue, number one, every Southeasterner must be a stakeholder in pursuing security. There must be a, a, a campaign of awareness. Okay. That's one of the okay. things we suggested to the governors. A massive campaign of security awareness. Everybody must become sensitive. But, but they, they know it. They know it. There's a bad security situation. But they're not doing it. Okay. They're not doing okay. it. It must be done. And that, then that they is must communicating be, the urgency to the citizenry. Yes, to this, and then disabuse him because I use propaganda of lies to subvert the minds of the youths. So this has to be debriefed. These people, these youths have to be debriefed. The, this thing has to be redone. Okay. Okay. So okay, I get you, Jeff. When it is done, the federal government has a, 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 a stake in the whole thing. Send enough security forces that will conduct operation in all the states of the Southeast simultaneously. That is the only thing, the only way these people can be routed out of the Southeast and this insecurity dealt with okay. decisively. I, I want to switch subjects now, General, because um, I, I did, we did promote at the top. Uh, but Bernard is still on the line. Bernard in Enogo. Okay, Bernard, you're going to be our last caller on this subject matter because we're going to move from here to the search for President Buhari's successor, which is another issue, and it probably relates to this as well. You know, it's all about leadership and our attitude to these things. So, Bernard, go ahead, please. Uh, uh, good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Yeah, uh, please, uh, uh, good morning to the guest in the studio, sir. 
Uh, as from Ananda and from Ananda State and from Ananda State, we are under siege. Carry on, please. Under, Go on, Bennett, under quickly. Siege. We are under siege. And from Navy, I went to the village last weekend. I ran away from the village because by 6 p.m., unable to come out. People, the, 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 the normal state actors have taken advantage of the vacuum created by state actors. We had a lot of things they refused to do, they were not doing. So the most state actors have taken advantage. So the state should unlabel those behind this screen so that our state will come back again. They should come back. The state, the state, the state okay. actors. Okay, okay Bernard, that's a... Let them flush this miscreant out. We are under siege. We are under siege. Very good. In fact, it does, that's what the general has been underlining for us and that um, I, I had asked him, so what's the way out? And you heard it just before we took your call, that everybody has to be on board. All the governors, no one state can do it alone, but there has to be this unity of purpose and seriousness of purpose across the region entirely. Um, we are saying that the Ebony is uh, different, Ebony state is different, but as the general was saying, no matter how much one person, one state tries, it still is not going to be enough. It must be, and he said, it needs, the actions need to be simultaneous across the region.